Snorkel narrow platform scissor lifts are ideal for slab construction, building renovation, and all types of maintenance work. These battery-powered machines feature built-in pothole protection and slope-level sensor interlocks as standard safety equipment. Center pivot steering permits an extremely tight turning radius. Other standard features offered only as options on competitors' models set them apart as industry leaders. The first two numbers of their model numbers designate approximate working heights, which range from 19 feet to 32 feet. These are rugged, dependable, value-priced work platforms with capacities ranging from 500 to 1,000 pounds. See your operator's manual for the capacity of your lift, and of course, never exceed that capacity. These machines should be operated only by a trained operator. This video focuses on lift operation. It is not designed to replace reading the operator's manual for your specific model of lift or hands-on instruction from a qualified trainer. Prior to operating the lift, you should be thoroughly familiar with the operator's manual and receive proper hands-on training. You also need to know OSHA and local regulations concerning operation and the use of safety devices such as fall restraints. And of course you should always dress appropriately and wear proper safety protection gear when operating any equipment and on any job site. There are three major hazards when operating any work platform. Electrocution, crushing and tip over. Following the procedures in the operator's manual and this video will help you guard against them. Advanced knowledge of the specifics of the model you will be running and its controls, gauges, and safety devices are important. These matters are covered in detail in the operator's manual, which also contains an excellent operator's troubleshooting guide. The operator's manual shows all the safety-related placards and decals on the machine and where they are placed. When you see warnings like these, heed them precisely. All Snorkel S-Series models have built-in battery chargers. Batteries should be charged at the end of every 8-hour work shift. To do this, disconnect the battery using the battery disconnect switch, which is located either adjacent to the battery tray or on the lower control panel. Check the water level in the battery. Battery acid is caustic and can burn skin and the charging process can release explosive hydrogen gas. So be careful and always charge batteries in a well-ventilated area away from sparks or flame. Plug the charger into a grounded power source. The charger will start working within a few seconds. If the battery is fully charged, all three green lights will be illuminated. Leave the charger on until it automatically shuts off. If the machine has been used since the last charge, this takes from one and a half to 16 hours, depending on how much the battery has been depleted. Using an excessively long cord to plug in the charger will decrease its amperage and may cause it to not recharge the battery properly. If a cord of appropriate length is used and the battery does not fully charge in 16 hours, the battery or the charger may be defective. Batteries that have been run very low or that begin to heat up before they are fully charged may take several cyclings to reach full charge. Charging should be done at the end of an eight-hour work shift. A tripped circuit breaker is a sign of an electrical problem. If the breaker trips repeatedly, do not operate the machine as damage may occur. Some models are equipped with a low voltage warning light. When you are using the lift function, if the light comes on, an alarm sounds and the platform will not raise. S-Series lifts have two control panels, a lower panel for control from the ground and an upper control box on the work platform. There are slight differences in the appearance of the control panels on some models, so consult your operator's manual for the configuration of the panel on your work platform. This lower panel contains the control selector switch, which determines whether the platform control panel is active, the platform raise-lower switch, and a red emergency stop switch. The panel also has an hour meter that shows the number of hours of operation. On some models, the lower panel may also include a circuit breaker reset, a low voltage warning light, and the battery disconnect switch. 
Controls for operating an S-Series lift from the platform are located on the upper control box. This panel has a second emergency stop switch, a drive lift selector switch, and a joystick that controls driving, lifting, and steering. On models 2646 and 3246, there is a drive range selector switch. The toggle switch should be set for high-speed drive all the time except for ascending or descending an incline or loading or unloading from a truck. A joystick controls the scissor lift and vehicle movement from the platform. The joystick has a safety interlock controller and only works if the interlock controller is squeezed against it. The lift drive selector switch determines whether the joystick is a lift lower controller or a drive controller to move the machine forward or backward. You cannot drive and lift at the same time. The speed switch on 2646 and 3246 models determine the speed range. Turtle means slow movement. Rabbit means fast. The machine should be operated with a speed selector switch in the high position at all times, unless loading the scissor on a truck or ascending or descending an incline. When the lift drive selector is set to lift, pulling back the joystick raises the lift. Pushing it forward causes the platform to lower. When the lift drive selector is set to drive, pushing forward on the joystick causes the machine to move forward. Pulling it back causes the machine to move in reverse. The further you push or pull the controller, the faster the motion except when lowering. The rocker switch on top of the joystick steers the front wheels left or right. The wheels do not return to straight ahead unless you center them with the controller. Snorkel S-Series lifts have a number of special alarms and safety devices that must be working when the machine is in use. Check each of them as part of your daily inspection. There are red emergency stop switches on both control panels. Any time one is pressed, the entire machine stops and nothing moves. On the upper control box, the emergency stop switch is a large red button. Once it is pressed, you will pull the button outward before the machine can be operated again. On some models, this may require a clockwise turn of the switch. The emergency stop switch on the lower control panel works similarly. Push the switch cover downward to make everything stop, and you will have to move it back up manually before restarting. S-lifts have pothole protector skids that lower automatically when the platform is elevated 24 inches. That's 61 centimeters. They lock in place, reducing the ground clearance to 1 inch on the S2646 and S3246 and 3 quarters of an inch on the S1930 and S2033, providing support should one of the wheels drive into a depression. The skid mechanism sounds an alarm if the skids encounter an obstruction. When this happens, the lift will not raise and the machine cannot be driven until the platform is lowered and the obstacle is removed. S-lifts also have alarms that sound if the machine is out of level, when it is moving, and when the platform is lowering. Other safety devices include guardrails, a safety prop to prevent the lift from lowering during maintenance or inspection, and a ground fault interrupt on the AC platform outlet. These lifts also have emergency lowering handles that allow the platform to be lowered in case of electrical or hydraulic malfunction. They are located at the front of the S1930 and S2033 and at the rear of the S2646 and the S3246. With those basics behind us, let's move on to operation. Safe operation begins with a pre-start inspection of the equipment and the workplace environment. Check all of the things mentioned in the pre-start inspection chart in the operator's manual. The operator's manual should be stowed in the proper place in the platform. Inspection should be done on a smooth, level surface. Check the battery, making sure the terminals are clean, there is ample water in the battery, and that it is fully charged. Always check the hydraulic fluid level prior to attempting to operate the machine. 
make sure all tools and other objects that could fall are removed from the platform. Then raise the lift enough to accommodate the prop by using the lift lower switch. Put the prop in place and lower the lift back so that the prop supports the platform. Turn the battery disconnect switch off again. Then, inspect all cables, wiring, and harnesses, and hydraulic hoses. If you are not sure how to do these things, consult the operator's manual. Use caution when working around pressurized hydraulic fluid. Escaping hydraulic fluid under pressure can have sufficient force to inject fluid into the flesh. If injured by escaping hydraulic fluid, seek medical attention at once. Continuing the inspection, Make sure the freewheeling valve is tightly closed. Verify that the grounding strap is attached to the chassis and it makes contact with the ground. Turn the battery disconnect switch back to on. Raise the platform slightly and remove and stow the prop. Operate the lift switch on the lower control panel to make sure the platform raises and lowers properly and that the lowering alarm works. Test the pothole protector skids by placing an obstacle, such as a piece of 2x4, under them as they attempt to deploy. Test the emergency stop switch. The machine should not operate with it activated. With the platform raised, stand clear of the scissors mechanism and test the emergency lowering handle. The platform should start lowering. Check for structural damage, loose bolts, or broken welds. The operator's manual provides details on what should be inspected. Check the tires and wheels and make sure all of the safety features are in good condition. On the lower control panel, set the control selector switch to upper control panel and enter the platform. Now inspect and operate the controls on the upper control panel. Make sure the joystick interlock is functioning. Test the emergency stop switch test the brakes. They should be engaged when the joystick interlock switch is not pressed, when the controls are in the lift position, and when the emergency stop switch is pushed inward. Finally, make sure the operator's manual is stowed in its proper place and that all decals and placards are in good condition. The other phase of your safety inspection is inspecting the area where you'll be working you also need to be aware of whether there will be other persons working in or walking around the area and whether there will be vehicles present. You need to check for electrical hazards, tipping hazards, hazardous and flammable materials, and anything overhead that the platform could run into or could cause a head or crushing injury to the operator. Outdoors, be aware of wind conditions that could create a tipping hazard. Snorkel elevating work platforms are not electrically insulated.